Hi, and thank you for joining us for another episode in this series of Spotify for Artists Masterclasses. My name is Brian Johnson. I work here at Spotify, sitting on the music team. I'm here in London at Spotify UK, where the session is being filmed and broadcast from. Now, we've put this Masterclass series together to help you as artists get to know the creative tools and resources that we're building out, and to provide some tips and tricks and shine a light on some of the best practices that will assist you in finding and developing your fan base and really to help put you in the best position to get your music out there to as many people as possible around the world. It's an incredible time for that right now. With Spotify coming online in more and more countries, 80 plus new countries in 2021 alone, there's so much opportunity for music to travel and fan bases to broaden out to different corners of the globe. And over the past few years, we've seen Spotify and the streaming world help facilitate songs and artists and wider genres in breaking out of their home territories. And some examples here that spring to mind are K-pop and reggaeton. These genres started locally, perhaps initially through word of mouth, or maybe on the streets, in venues, in studios, bars, perhaps clubs. And they were able to accelerate in global popularity through streaming and Spotify's reach, editorial, and marketing opportunities. And importantly, through artists and their teams fully tapping into what's available within Spotify for artists. We want to make it easier and easier for you to reach new fans and for your music to move around the world. And we're constantly looking to create new opportunities to help you do this. In our last episode, we covered many of the tools and features in this area. We looked at an overview on what Spotify for Artists is. We looked at how to manage your profile, how playlists work, and how you can pitch new music for playlist consideration. We looked at how to access your music and your audience stats, promotional tools such as Marquee, creative expression tools such as Canvas, Soundtrap, Music and Talk, and much, much more. To check out that episode, just head over to the video section on Spotify for Artists. In this episode, we're going to be focusing in on a few recent updates and launches, including our Watch New Feed, a place where followers can be notified about your new music. We'll take a deeper look into Marquee, the promotional tool that we're continuing to roll out across different markets. And we'll check out our recent fan study report, a collection of data-driven insights about how fans connect with artists around the world and what you can do to make the most of them And we're going to touch on the importance of credits and making sure that your songwriter and your producer collaborators are listed and credited properly on Spotify. We'll also be taking a look at a genre that's been crossing borders during recent times, Ama Piano from South Africa. And we'll hear from Fiona Akumu, our head of music in Africa, as well as artists from the scene, to dig into those wider moments that have enabled Ama Piano to travel and to connect with music fans around the world. Okay. Let's begin by looking at the What's New feed. So we spoke a lot about follow in episode one, and we honed in on the various benefits and ways in which you can grow your followers on Spotify. Just to recap, the more followers you have, the more reach you'll have, and the more people around the world we can recommend your music to. In places like our personalized playlists, such as Release Radar, Release Radar being a key playlist for you. Well, What's New is another major benefit of follow. It's a feed that sits in the Spotify app gathering all the new releases from artists and shows that listeners follow on Spotify. So here, the more followers you have, the more of your fans watch new feeds you'll appear in, and the more opportunity they'll have to listen to your new music just as it's released. Now, on to Marquee. To recap on what Marquee is, it's a full screen, sponsored recommendation of your new release that goes to Spotify listeners who've shown interest in your music and have the potential to listen even more. Marquee grabs listeners' attention and it guides them from the home screen directly to your new album or your EP or your single. And it's a great way to turn listeners into fans. So you can actually see what the positive impact of Marquee looks like in real life and how it's been helping artists. We put together a bunch of case studies from artists including Biba Doobie, Jack Boy, Girl in Red, Mount Joy, and Lecrae. Let's take a look at the one for Girl in Red, the Norwegian artist who released a debut album, If I Could Make It Go Quiet, back in April 2021. In preparation for the release, Girl in Red and her team were looking for a way to introduce the album globally with the aim of making as much noise as possible from the moment the album was released and maintaining momentum across the international rollout. They were able to leverage Marquis' ongoing international expansion to run a multi-market campaign, launching on album release day in Australia and New Zealand, and then a week later in the US and Canada to bring in another wave of listeners who may not have heard the album during release week in those particular markets. So a staggered approach. 
Despite the differences in the regional campaign strategies, audiences across these countries, Australia, New Zealand, the US, Canada, they showed strong intent to keep streaming and keep listening to the tracks to the music. After seeing the marquee, over 42% of listeners saved the track from the album to their library or added it to their personal playlist, a surefire way to bring in repeat listens. So overall, an excellent outcome with many listeners turned into fans and with Girl and Red and team able to use Marquee to feed into one of the key targets for their wider album campaign, a top 10 album in Australia. To check out that case study and others in more detail and to learn more about how Marquee works, how to get started with it, and if Marquee is available in your part of the world, just head over to the Marquee page on Spotify for Artists where you'll find all of the information. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we launched in around 80 new countries this year in 2021, bringing the total number of countries where Spotify is available to 178. Again, loads of opportunity for music to travel and reach new fans. And Reach is a chapter that we look at in our recently published fan study, a collection of data-driven insights about how fans connect with artists around the world and what you and your team can do to make the most of them. The Reach section sits alongside engagement, showing the value in deepening relationships with existing fans. There's a release section, showing how your release strategy may be focused around more of a, maybe more of a cadence than a single moment. And then there's a merchandise section containing some best practices and tips that'll help you get the most out of your merch store. Each of the four chapters have insights that are paired with a specific action for you and your team to take to grow your fan base, but actually not just on Spotify, but across the wider music industry, on social media, in emerging media and beyond. It's a super useful site that can help you build strategies for Spotify artists' features like playlist pitching, canvas, promo cards, and more. One of the interesting insights I picked out from the Reach section was around how regional genres are anything but. Music is way more global than ever, especially these days, which means your audience may be in places you didn't expect. So as an example, over 80% of K-pop, reggae, and South African house listens happen outside of their home country. This is a huge opportunity for those artists and, and those fans alike. But how does this happen? We know that streaming enables music to travel more than ever, but what are those wider cultural and those wider societal moments that can feed into this and help local music to connect and translate internationally to festival lineups, press, radio, and other media? We're going to get into that now and dive into a genre that is a product of South African house, Ama Piano, a genre that's been finding fans on a global stage from Ed Sheeran, who teamed up with South African producer Cool Drink on the remix of his hit Bad Habits, to artists such as Georgia Smith or Masego, who've both released Ama Piano inspired tracks in 2021. Let's now hand it over to Fiona Okumu, who's at Flame Studios in Johannesburg, to take a look at the scene in more detail. Born of the townships of South Africa, Amapiano is more than just a genre. It's an expression of South Africanism. From the back rooms of Attridgeville to nightclubs in downtown London, the sound has grown and reached heights once thought impossible. This city moves at 123 beats per minute. Producers from these spaces are in their rooms and home studios shaping the sounds of tomorrow. It's an attitude, it's ingenuity, creativity, but most importantly, it's entirely our own. Amapiano represents a new sonic direction from South Africa's rich musical history. And these are the faces of Amapiano. And so I'm going to start with a question to our lovely guests, Lady Du and Amos. So nice of you to be with us today. What do you make of the international success that Amapiano is starting to show potential for? As a country, you know, it's so amazing to see how people are receiving our music because I feel like Amapiano is a rebirth of Kwaito. So with how um, people are receiving our music in other countries. It's more of an exciting moment for all of us, but I also feel like it's a door opener for the Africans as a whole. 
Question for Amos and Lady Do. Why do you think it is that Amapiano Piano broke out of South Africa and the continent, but other genres that came before it didn't? I think it is because of social media. People being at home and being bored, you know, they started um, embracing the songs. So social media played a huge platform. And obviously with us learning as we go, mastering, mixing and all of that, people are now receiving it as it comes. I think that gave Amapiano Piano a chance to to dominate in a way. Really? Because people were so devastated. People were really worried about this whole pandemic thing. Really? So I'm a piano is there to, to soothe in our hearts, you know, so we can keep dancing regardless of the circumstance we were in. Do you think that you guys could be as able to succeed with your own means if there was no facility such as streaming? I don't think so. Why don't you think so? Um, first and foremost, remember before Ama Piano became, we never had distribution, marketing, but we were using the tool of social media to, to get our work out there. So without social media, I don't think we could have gotten this far, you know? And also with that, I think a lot of the streaming platforms um, helped us a lot with the standard of how the music should be released. Because when you send out music, to you know, streaming platforms, mm -hmm. there's a, a standard mm -hmm. that needs to be met mm -hmm. of the song. Mm -hmm. So if that was not there, we would have released non-quality songs, mm -hmm. you know, and we would have had the first bunch of Ama Piano songs that were not mastered, mm -hmm. we didn't care about the art, and not even knowing how to even, you know, uh, promote the music. What would you say to a young artist now? that is starting their career today. What are the most important things that they need to have in place in order to start their careers right? I always say to people, the best way to succeed in something is education. Mm -hmm. Even in music, they need to be educated. They need to find the right people for management. They need to understand what they're doing and understanding that the music is not for them personally, but the people that they're doing it for. So knowing that the business side is just as important as the talent. Everything that you do in the field, musically and in business education. Is there any a time that you guys have discussions about the authenticity of the music and if that matters when you are considering blowing up and going global because oftentimes going global means, you know, possibly cross-pollinating sounds. Well, um, I have a view of business, mm -hmm. right? Like every other factory, there's always franchises, mm -hmm. right? So a lot of people will come and say it's originally from and Italian. But mm -hmm. if we do not have people that do the music that we are doing in the same line and representing it, who's going to listen to Ama Piano? Because it takes a person from outside to realize that South Africa has something and come, that's the only way we will be able to introduce Ama Piano to a different audience. culture or audience. Mm. By them coming and saying, this is a new genre, mm. we are trying it out. Mm. By them doing that, it's actually expanding what we are doing. So I feel like they are opening doors for us to be noticed. If somebody from the UK says, I'm a piano to the world, mm -hmm. you are literally bringing the attention to I'm a piano as a culture. Mm -hmm. So if it's originally from South Africa, when you Google it, mm -hmm. there. what are you there. going to find? South, South Africans. And that's when you will come to the root of the tree. So we kind of touched on this before about how streaming has helped kind of accelerate the genre, but what, if you had to hone in on what that's done, like how, how has streaming helped Ama Piano get to other countries? And how has it helped your music? Technology has made things way easier mm -hmm. to stream, to download. I mean, that's uh, probably, that's the reason why it's, it's moving so quick. Yeah, yeah, it's the streaming. It's the streaming. And also what I like about streaming platforms is how transparent they are. Yeah. So it's easy for you to be able to see 
which country is receiving your music more and how they're receiving it in numbers. It becomes easier for us to even get bookings outside and whether we should accept some and, you know, those are the things that actually help us in the direction that we should be moving, you know. So even with lyrics, it's easy for me to go and listen to the hottest person because I am obsessed with what I do and I have passion for it. So I will go to streaming platforms, listen to the number one top song at that moment to hear what made that song. So if it's emotions, if it's, you know, the drums, if it's, then I go back, bring it back to Africa with our flavor because it's, it's easy for us to make it internationally because we are coming in with the African flavor. So to lose it is when we are going to go to other countries and want to blend in. But when they actually want what you are coming with from South Africa, you know. So the streaming platforms, they actually help educate us outside of where we are. Mm -hmm. So it becomes easier for us Discovery. to know. You know, it disco you, you know, so it changes the sound, how you write and how people would receive you. So that is why I'm saying it's so easy for us to um, work with streaming platforms because if there weren't any streaming platforms, then we'd have to have CDs. We'd have to be on the street more. We'd have so it has prevented and saved enough money for us to invest back into the music. Yes, thank you. So it's super inspiring to see your music, Lady Do's music, Amos music, uh, and the wider genre, I'm a piano, finding audiences around the world. There's musicians watching this masterclass from all around the world. What would you say to them, those musicians, those artists who want to make music and break through borders, reach a global audience, whether they be from India, Argentina, Japan, Australia, all around the world, what would you say to them as, as fellow musicians? Be true to who you are, understand who you are, and deliver who you are. Don't try and be like somebody else. Reference from them, learn from their mistakes, but remember who you are. Collaboration is power. You know, when we collaborate, we tap into another sphere. The different audience, collaboration is everything. So to grow your sound wherever in the country, you just need to collaborate mm. with other artists then the music moves. Great, one more fee if possible. This is a question that I'm personally curious on and obviously I have to ask. How has Spotify in particular helped with your journey and your music? I think what Lady Do has said, um, being able to see where you are streamed the most, mm -hmm. um, that actually opened a lot of doors for us because you know where to go, you know who to focus on more, you know who to collaborate with next because of the numbers never lie, you know, the numbers are right there. So it has helped us a lot, I won't lie. I will just say something about Spotify. <laughs> Spotify is a platform for everyone. Spotify is a platform that is transparent. It is a business as a whole for an artist. It helps us understand where you, we are going, the direction we are taking, and where sh we should turn. Because it's not easy for an artist to understand the business. You are able to see which song is bigger than the other. You are able to see which song to focus on. You're able to see the brand growing as a whole. You see how many countries are embracing you, which countries. I mean, for them to break down all of that, it makes the business side much easier for the artists. So by going onto the Spotify platform, you are able to see your growth as a person. You are able to see the maintenance of your growth because when you are not growing, then you stop. But when you are growing, you, you grow and it never, you know, your streams and your monthly, your listeners, monthly listeners, those are the things that a lot of people are not aware of in South Africa and they don't understand how big of a platform Spotify is for our genre. Mm -hmm. You know, as soon as they understand that, then they'll be able to catch up with every other thing because it's a global platform. It doesn't only, you know, release music in South Africa and that's it. You know, it's a global platform, so it's easy for us to 
drop music on Spotify and you find the UK streaming it, Nigeria streaming it, Africa streaming it, and people actually take you so, I attest, like literally, guys on God, people take you seriously because of your monthly streams on Spotify. <laughs> End of. Just want to say thank you, Lady Do, thank you, Amos. I'm super excited for both of your journeys. I'm super excited for what is going to happen with Ama Piano and South African music as a whole. It does feel like it's quite all on a reset. Who knows what's going to happen, but everything that's going to happen will probably happen on Spotify. And thank you everyone for tuning in. Super inspiring to hear from Fiona, Lady Do, and Amos. Thank you for joining us. And to see how Ama Piano has really started to gain traction during recent times. As we heard from the conversation, there are so many factors that can make music go global. But we want to ensure that you're in the best possible position to take control of what you can and to fully use Spotify for Artists to your advantage. So, build your following. Check out Marquee, check out Fan Study, which we spoke about earlier in the session. Pitch your music for playlists. And remember to do that at least a week in advance. Use Canvas, check out promo cards, and check out everything else that's on offer. And of course, Make sure your music is on Spotify in the first place in line with other streaming platforms to give yourself the best chance of building your audience, getting your music out there. Once your music is available and you're making use of everything that's on offer, you can of course then monitor your efforts through your music and your audience stats dashboard, where you can see the playlists where your tracks are potentially being picked up, as well as seeing the wider impact on your top 50 cities and your top 50 countries and how your fan base is growing and evolving over time. This info can be super useful, super valuable, especially when you're thinking about routing tours or making decisions on where to focus your marketing efforts. A final thing worth mentioning here is that we're able to display songwriter and producer credits on Spotify. So please do ensure that you list your name and all of the songwriter and producer collaborators on the track when you're delivering to us through your label or distributor. It sounds obvious, but it's something that can occasionally slip. And we know that fans don't just listen to tracks, they wanna get involved with the music and they may want to know who wrote and produced their favorite songs. And of course, we want to ensure that you get the credit and you get the opportunity to be discovered by new collaborators, industry partners, and fans all around the world. If you notice that your song doesn't have credits, then it's likely that we didn't receive the information from your label or distributor. So to get that updated, we just recommend reaching out to them and once they send the updated information, the metadata to us, and we've got that all on our systems, we'll look at getting those credits live ASAP for you. So we're at the end of the session. We hope you found it interesting. We hope you found it inspiring. And we hope that you've picked up some knowledge to help take your next steps on Spotify and beyond. As always, we'd love for you to keep in touch with us. We are Spotify for Artists on Instagram. We are Spotify Artists on Twitter. Do keep an eye on those channels as well as Spotify for Artists itself for more on masterclasses and other Spotify for Artists initiatives. Thank you for joining and we'll be seeing you next time.